effect of device aging on static power analysis attacks and its joint work with Nahme Karimi and uh, Torben Moos. Um, can you hear me? Does it work? Okay, good. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, yeah, I'm going to first um, show you some very useful. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to um, explain shortly about the fundamentals of a static power consumption and solution analysis based on a static power consumption, and some basics about device aging, which is a uh, which is a common and uh, known f fact in in VLSI and test domain, and also the target that we have selected in our experiments, plus simulation analysis and practical analysis on some fabricated chips, and so of course I'm concluding this this talk based on a study that we have done. Um, you know that for those that they are in the VLSI domain probably it's very uh, trivial and, and known but this is suppose that you have a transistor that as is can be seen as a switch when the transistor is on the switch is, is conducting then there is a current passing through the through the channel but when the transistor is off the switch is actually should be not conducting but there is a still a little little current passing through the channel for instance from the drain to the source which is referred to leakage current or a static power consumption. You know, it means that when the device or when the switch is not um, conducting and everything is in a stable mode, uh, still there is a small current passing through the VDD to the ground of the chip, which is referred to leakage current or a static power consumption. This, this picture is actually predictive. Uh, many years ago, it has been predicted that um, in future when the technology is a smaller then the amount of um, static power consumption, this line, the green one goes up and up and on and becomes even larger than dynamic power consumption. It means that this will be the main factor of the power consumption of the system. Indeed, I can say that, or I should say that it didn't happen really like this. It means that now in the new technologies that we have based on the development of the semiconductor and so on, um, it's not exactly like this. The static power consumption went up, but not exactly higher than the dy dynamic power consumption. It's also known that this is static power consumption or static leakage is data dependent. Means that if you have, for instance, one just inverter, the input of the inverter A is, for instance, zero, then it, the circuit is equivalent to just one NMOS transistor, which is off. And when the input is A, the, the circuit is similar to a just PMOS transistor, which is off. But leakage current of these two transistors, the NMOS and PMOS transistor, when they are not conducting, they are not the same, means that the static leakage or the current leakage which is passing through the VDD to the ground of this inverter depends on this input. Of course, this is true in more complicated gates like a NAND gate. When the input is zero, zero, the circuit is seen as two um, NMOS transistor in series and when the input is zero, one um, or one, zero, then you will see just one in, uh, NMOS transistor and when the input is one, one, you have two PMOS transistors in parallel. Then again, the amount of power consumption Static power consumption of the gate depends on the input which is given to the gate. Then in total, if you have a combinatorial circuit, which is large like the AESS box, for instance, then the amount of a static leakage of this uh, combinatorial circuit will be dependent on the input of the combinatorial circuit. Of course, based on this fact, a couple of uh, sergeant analysis based on the static power consumption has been developed um, also based on um, simulation and also in practice. Of course, there are some difficulties how to measure it, but we will see it later. On the other hand, we have the device aging fact, means that if you have a CMOS device and it's working for a long time and it's aged, then it faces some reliability issues. What does it mean? For, for example, you have a circuit which has the maximum clock frequency of 200 megahertz, and you are running at 200 megahertz, everything is fine, and if the device is working for a couple of months, this 200 megahertz clock, if you give it a still 200 megahertz, 
uh, there is no guarantee that the device performs without any failure. It means that if you want to be sure the device still performs correctly, then it's better to decrease the clock frequency, for instance, 195, then you are sure that there's the no failure is happening. The reason for this is, um, um, is the threshold voltage of the transistor that we will see in more detail here that, uh, that affects on the reliability of the circuits. There are parameters about uh, um, device aging, um, TDDB, electromigration, BTI, and HCI. Um, I'm not, of, of course, explaining everything here because there are too much into physics and electronics. Um, just, um, I shortly explained the effect of the last two one, um, the BTI or NBTI, negative bias temperature instability, means that if the device is aged, the threshold voltage of PMOS transistors is going up. And HCI, hot carrier injection, uh, the effect of HCI on, um, based on aging means that uh, if the device is aged, the NMOS transistor, mainly NMOS transistors, have the higher threshold voltage. Yeah? Which can, we can just summarize everything to, to, to this fact that if the device is aged, then the threshold voltage of the transistor is going up. Of course, there are different reasons for that and how they are affected and so on. We are not getting into details, but this is the message that we can get from the aging of the CMOS devices. This is, for instance, the simulation which uh, Nagme did, um, that you run it in the, um, you run that one um, PMOS transistor for a long time, for instance, six months, and then at the same time, um, we are just measuring uh, the threshold voltage or observing the threshold voltage of the PMOS transistor. Um, when, that, when the trans transistor is under stress, the stress means that for NBTI, the, 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 the transistor is always switching. Yeah? The transistor is always switching, it's under stress, and you see that the, for a long time, um, the, the threshold voltage is increasing over the time. And then for sometimes, if you uh, stop giving the stress to the transistor, and then again give, put it under stress, you will see that the threshold voltage is recovered a bit and then go up again and recovered and go up again. It means that for some, some part of the um, increasing the threshold voltage of the NBTI can be recovered, which is not the case for HCI. It means that for NMOS transistors, when they are aged or effect of the, ACI, uh, of the HCI, um, the threshold voltage goes up, but if you just leave a device to rest, nothing is recovered. Now, based on this too, I have to say that, um, you know, the threshold voltage uh, plays an important role um, um, on the trade-off between the delay of the circuit and also the leakage current of the CMOS devices. Means that some, for some applications that they are not timing critical, you can take um, from the um, low power um, libraries of a standard logic libraries, and then what happens, then you have actually the higher threshold voltage of the transistor, and then um, um, the, the amount of leakage current of these gates will be a smaller, and then you have a low power, let's say, library or low power design that you have, of course, just based on the library which is selected, but at the same time, um, this does not work for, a, uh, or does not work for timing critical applications. I mean that it, the circuit will be a bit slower compared to non-high um, um, threshold voltage libraries. But aging, as I said, affects on the threshold voltage, means that if the device is aged, then of course the, the threshold voltage of the transistor going up, and then at the same time the circuit becomes a bit slower. Yeah, this is the effect. And at the same time, we can say that the amount of static power consumption will be decreased when we have a higher threshold voltage. And then this aging process, which has a should affect on these two facts, uh, also can be accelerated. It means that if you run the device at a high temperature and also high, thresh, uh, high, um, high supply voltage, that the, the device gets aged faster. Um, what, what we can see here, or what we have observed, and I'm, I just want to give you the short message of this talk, is that um, um, when, because when the device is aged, the amount of aesthetic power consumption is decreased, then of course the attacks become a bit harder because the level of signal compared to level of noise is decreased. But at the same time, what we have observed is the data dependency between the aesthetic power consumption and the input of the circuit um, is also changing during the time when the device is aged. You know, I mean, it, it doesn't mean that if you have a dependency or function between the amount of aesthetic power and the input of the circuit, if this function is just decreased by a factor, just everything is changing when the device is aged. For the target, we have selected one um, very simple, uh, small implementation of the present cipher, which has only four bit SPOX here. Um, we are actually mainly concentrating on the SBOX in simulation, which is a just four bit bijection. This is the chip that we have fabricated just uh, in 65 nanometer technology. This is just two millimeter by two millimeter chip. And what you see here, the small circle here is the present um, 
core, complete core, not only the S-Box. Um, based on the simulation, uh, we did the aging acceleration at 90 degree and also the VDD 1.4 uh, when the nominal uh, voltage value is 1.2, uh, uh, for the simulation we have taken the um, net list of all fabricated chip means exactly the same net list or the S-Box which is fabricated and the chip is taken. And then we have measured the static power consumption for all input values, means that of course the S-Box is four, but then we have 16 different input values. And the, the blue bar at the left side of each, uh, each of this group of bars is the static power consumption for the, when the device is not aged, means it's a fresh device. You see that after aging, one week up to, four, uh, up to eight weeks, the amount of aesthetic leakage has decreased instantly and then is still decreasing over the time. This is not the only effect that we have observed. Also, if you concentrate on some particular inputs, you see that before the device is aged, there are roughly for some input values, the aesthetic power consumption is the same, but um, after the aging, this, this balance is not existing anymore. It means that for one of the input values, it consumes more static power compared to the other one. Um, but for the other inputs, you can see also other way around, it means that uh, before the device is aged, uh, there is a difference between the static power, but when the device is aged, for both inputs, they consume roughly the same amount of power. Um, these are the things that I already explained. Um, the data dependency will be different, and also absolute leakage current is decreasing. And we have performed some um, tests on this, on the simulated data based on first uh, TVLA, T-test, fixed versus random test to just look at, uh, to see the dependency or how much, how much detectable uh, leakage, detect detectable leakage exists. Um, here at the first one, you see the original value, original device, and then after four weeks and after eight weeks. Uh, the T-test is decreasing as we were expecting. And also uh, if you run a classical CPA attack using the Hamming weight model, you can see also that the number of measurements that you need to perform the tech successfully is also increasing. At the same time, the correlation value is also decreasing. Then for the practical things, um, this is actually the, the board that we have customized ourselves. And then uh, here is the chip, which is on the socket. And then this two millimeter by two millimeter chip is actually here. And then of course, the board has some facilities to measure the aesthetic power consumption. And this is the, oops, this, this is, um, the amplifier that we also build ourselves with a gain of 100 means 100 times the signal is amplified. And I, I have to say that the, the normal amplifier that is usually used by, uh, by dynamic power consumption measurements cannot be used here because we are interested in DC shift of the signal. If you use a, a AC amplifiers, uh, that they are just passing the dynamic power consumption, uh, they, are, they are not useful here. Then you don't get anything about the static power consumption. And then here we have a climate chamber that um, uh, we have to control the, uh, the we have to control the temperature when we are measuring the static power consumption. This is super sensitive to the temperature. If you just put your finger close to the chip, you will see that the static power consumption goes up. Uh, how do we measure? Uh, suppose, that, as I said, the circuit should be in idly mode, and then we are interested in the amount of static power which is passing through the circuits. For instance, you stop the clock, and then you have to wait for a long time till all the bumps are gone and the effect of dynamic power consumption. And then again, for another long term, you can get a, get a measurement here, get a trace, and then get average over this T2 time to get a singular value uh, as a meaning of the amount of aesthetic power consumption of the circuit at that state. If you want to know how long they are, for instance, when T1, you can have 100 milliseconds, 200 milliseconds, so for T2, roughly the same from 100 to 500 milliseconds. Of course, if you measure here longer, then you, you get rid of noise much easier. Torben will show in the next talk that you are actually don't need to stop the clock if the circuit does not have any activity and the clock is still is running, you can still perform this attack and measure this uh, static power consumption. We have conducted our tests on two different chips, uh, of course the same chips but from two, um, two samples. Um, the aging was done at the 90 degree and uh, voltage uh, VDD of 1.4. All the measurements that we have done at two, uh, 20 degree and 1.2 volt means that we got the fresh device, measured at 20 degree and 1.2 volt, put in the oven, um, with 90 degree and the VDD of 1.4 for four weeks, took it out, again put it in the, another setup with 20 degree and 1.2 measure, again put it in the oven. This process is repeated, why? 
because first of all, we wanted to measure at 20 degree, and at the same time, we wanted to avoid any effect of the aging on the, on the board and the PCB on the, part, on the components on the, on, the, on the measurements and stuff. Means that we were just, we were 100% sure that the effect of aging that we are observing is just on the chip, not on the board, not on the, any other components of the setup. The results were of very, very the same why we have done it in two, two devices or two chips because um, we have received some comments that it might be, what you have seen is might be a coincidence. You have to at least repeat it on different chips to, or different samples to make sure that what you are observing is exactly correct, which is, which is a true, true comment actually. Um, here the, the two results are roughly the same. Of, of, I cannot say they are 100% the same because they are two different samples. The T value is decreasing as we have observed in the simulation and also the correlation value is also decreasing. Roughly the same thing that we have seen in the simulation. What is important to say, of course, I'm not going to read all these numbers in the table about the result of the simulation and the measurement. What is interesting here, if you look at the average of our total power consumption or current passing, is, is that here you have, um, um, you can see that the dif distance or difference between the original value and after four weeks aging and eight, bit eight weeks aging, um, you see that, that the amount of current is decreased, yeah? but uh, what we have seen in simulation is not uh, completely fitting to here. In the simulation, we have seen that the amount of static power is decreasing uh, instantly after the first week of aging, and then it's decreased uh, with, a, uh, with a, um, a smaller or shorter, shorter speed. But what we see here is not completely linear, but yeah, very, uh, very close to linear, that the amount of aesthetic power consumption is decreasing over the time. Based on this, we have repeated another measurement, another test on another chip with 150 nanometer. That, as I said, uh, we have to control the temperature when we are measuring the aesthetic power, and the aesthetic power consumption depends on the temperature as well. Then it's always nicer, better, if you want to measure aesthetic power consumption, that you do it at high temperature. It means that you put the device in the oven and at 80 degree, and always you are measuring at 80 degree. Then what happens, actually the device is also aged at the same time. You know, it means that if we measure at the first week here, one million traces and perform the attack, we'll see we, we need roughly 100,000 traces. The device is still on the oven, is always on the measurement, and then after the second week, you see, again, that you get you get one million traces or many measurements and it, now you need 200,000 200, traces or measurements to perform. And then this number of measurements that you need to, um, you need to, uh, uh, you need to use for the um, evaluation or an analysis is increasing. If I want to conclude um, here, I mean, I'll just repeat what, what I said, that the leakage current is decreasing by when the device is aged. The attacks based on aesthetic power consumption becomes harder. The dependency between the power consumption uh, and the data, which is input of the combinatorial circuit, is also getting different. What is, what is the most important part to say is that when we are measuring for a long time in the oven for high temperature, for a long time, for instance, eight weeks, that the traces that we got for the, in the first week, they are not fitting to the traces that we got on the eight weeks. And that means that if you want to have, for instance, here, 100 million traces measured during the eight weeks, they are not actually the samples of the same population. Yeah? The dependency that we are looking for is, is actually changing. Um, this is actually, I think this is the, the only message that I want to say that um, if you have the device in the oven and then measure it, measure the device, uh, measure the core of the device, and then at the end, um, uh, for instance, it took eight weeks, and then you want to perform another attack, uh, another measurement on the, another core of the same chip, the chip is already aged and what you are observing might be completely different to, uh, if, to the case if you take a completely fresh sample and measure it. Thank you so much for your attention. I think I, I took longer than I should. Than I should. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Hi, thanks for the nice presentation. Um, I have two questions. First is, uh, you didn't tell us what kind of technology uh, for the simulations, because the simulations strongly depend your SPICE models. Um, what SPICE models or what did you use? Um, we have taken um, the SPICE model and the in technology information from the same chip that we have fabricated, because first we fabricated the chip and then performed the simulation. Okay, and that's 65 nanometer, what, low power, TSMC, whatever? I cannot tell the name of the company. 
because okay. it's under NDA. We are forbidden to give the name of the company. Oh, okay. Because there is a big difference between um, low power keys and I can say it's low power. I can say that it's okay. low power. Second question is, um, what would happen if you use FD SOI? Sorry, Maybe I didn't get it. FD SOI, which is kind of used in, the, in smaller technologies, mm -hmm. which supposedly doesn't leak. Okay. FD fully depleted silicon on insulator, FD SOI. I I think I should translate this question to Nachma, who is sitting close to you in the areas okay. of the VLSI. <laughs> but uh, I can say that we have not considered this. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I see that it actually, I should, maybe we can talk offline, so I'll uh, don't start now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. More questions? It's time for the next speaker, so let's thank Amir again.